Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Wherever you are, remember, you have greatness inside of you. Welcome back to Another Ad Daily News with Hockey Coach Girl, Coach Frenchy. Today, episode number 221. What do you have minute, Coach, uh, today? First of all, the ab continues to struggling. The five biggest surprises for the Montreal Canadiens in 2022. Then finally, another update about the World Junior Championship. But before we start, we invite you, please don't forget to click on the like, subscribe to the Hockey Nation Show, and leave me a comment about this episode. And let's dive and talking about my first subject of the day. My first subject is about the World Junior Championship 2023 update. The semifinal is happening tonight. First of all, Sweden play against Chacha and Team USA versus Team Canada. Canada. Of course, they have Conor Bedard have an amazing, great tournament so far with the team and the rest. When I'm talking about the rest, guys, they need support. They need players to show up for the Team Canada for this game against Team USA. I'm talking about the second line, the third line, the fourth line. Not only Conor Bedard and his line. We need more if the Team Canada want to beat Team USA. Then we need to have a better first pass on the breakout. They really struggled again, Team Slovakia last game because they really have some kind of dif difficult on the defensive zone coverage. And then we need to be sure the goalie Milik have a great performance for Team Canada. So be really interested in how they're going to respond again, Team USA. We know they beat the Slovakia by the score of 4 3 and over time. It took Two other goals of Conor Bedard for Team Canada to have an opportunity to play in semi-final against the Team USA. On the flip side, Team USA guy is a team have a good players in their team. First of all, Logan Coley, third overall pick NHL Draft 2022 behind Nemec and, of course, Sakoski. And their defenseman, Transition. I think they are really good defensemen. First, Luke Hughes, one of the best defensemen in that tournament, following by Lane Hudson and others. They are really fast, quick. They can move the puck very fast too. So that's something we have to team Canada have to be sure they don't give that kind of space up for the defensemen. Then Team USA, they have a really good support for other players than Logan Coley. I'm talking about uh, Gauthier, Boucher. Snuckerad, then Savage and Brinkley. They are really good on the second line, third line of that team. It's the team is going to be quick, fast, and Team Canada will need to find a way to stop the transition. The game is going to be played between the two lines. So what are you talking about? It's about the speed between the two blue lines. There's going to be the transition between the two blue lines, and there's going to be the cap control between the two blue lines. This is where the game is going to be at the end of the day. So it will be interesting what happening again, Team Canada and the Team USA. Yes, we're going to do the play-by-play -play commentary with Coach Frenchy at 6.30 Eastern Time. Join us, uh, the Hockey Nation Live Show, to watching Team Canada versus Team USA. This concludes, guys, my first subject of the day. Subject of the day, guys, about the abs. Five biggest surprise in 2022. First of all, the first impression, Owen Beck. Wow. At the development camp, at the rookie camp, and then at the training camp, Owen Beck was maybe the best rookie at those three camps for the Montreal Canadiens. At the point, at the end, when he leave to return to OHL, the Montreal Canadiens offered him an entry-level contract of three years. That's just prove what Beck did during the training camp with the Montreal Canadiens. Martin Sinoui was impressed by his hockey sense, his vision, and the way he can read the play on the three zone. Owen Beck deserved to be the first impression for the Montreal Canadiens. Then the good things uh, come in the small package. What are you talking about? I'm talking about Lane Hudson. It could be the stolen pick in the draft 2022. Lane Hudson was picked by the Montreal Canadiens, 62 overall pick. At the beginning, at the draft, many experts put him on the end of the first round, and we have to wait until 62, and Montreal Canadiens select him. Since they draft him, he got one inches and a half taller, and he gained 10 pounds of muscle mass. Hudson's doing very well at the Team USA at the World Junior Championship with them. He scored one goal last game against Germany, and he continues to give some kind of speed and the transition, like I mentioned earlier about Team Canada. And he does really well right now. His first year and the freshman in NCAA with 18 points and 
16 game. My third surprise for the Montreal Canadiens in 2022, guys, is a seamless transition, Kenan Coley. For me, he's getting better and better and better. More game he play in NHL whatsoever who he play again. Coley is the, maybe the best rookie for the Montreal Canadiens this year since the beginning of the season. Look, we knew already what kind of player he was, but not the way he delivered so far. He played above my expectation, to be honest with you, and he continues to perform. Look, he played a left defenseman. Now he played on the right defenseman. He played against the best line, the opening team, best player. It's no matter. He keeps consistent to performing for the Montreal Canadiens with the 14 points since the beginning of the season to go. 12 assists. We have to recognize him as the best rookie with the Montreal Canadiens. My number four, guys, the solution could be that. What? Yes, is the solution because right now he fixed the solution of the first line with Caulfield and Suzuki. Like Suzuki, Doc struggled in December, but since they are together, I think he's the best winger for the Montreal Canadiens. We know the great for him, the 13th overall pick. We Expect him to play as a center, but because the situation for the Montreal Canadiens when nobody can play with Caulfield and Zuzuki is become the solution for the first line. The next one, guys, is the password. What? Yes, Hubbard Wi-Fi Jack Guy. He got that nickname Wi-Fi, so I'll call him the password. Other Caden Coley guy is maybe the biggest surprise for the Montreal Canadiens. Nobody was expect him. To be who he is right now in NHL, play game after game, playing an average of 60 minutes per game since the beginning of the season. Look, he can fight, he can score already five goals, not bad on the power play, and he continues to be physical on the defensive zone coverage. Not many defensemen can do this right now for the Montreal Canadiens. So, what he brings on the table as a third pairing defense, undrafted, and now we have a contract with the Montreal Canadiens. This is a great surprise with the Montreal since the beginning of the season. Albert Jekai. Finally, I want to add one more. You said five, coach. I like to over delivery. So my last one, guy, is the tool man. What? The tool man. The Sean Manian. Why you call him the tool man? You need to fix something on power play. This Sean Manian. You need to fix something in PK. This is Sean Manian. You need to have a better line and ever strength with any other winger beside him. This is your tall man, Sean Manion, to fix it. You want a very important face-off center to win the face-off? This is Sean Manion. And this what is Sean Manion for the Montreal Canadiens. He's a tall man since the beginning of the season. Great trade for Ken Hughes. It would be interesting if he's going to be trade or not at the trade deadline. Unfortunately, right now he's uh, on the injury reserve with a broken foot. He should be a return with the Montreal the next 10 days. He's already started skating since December 28th. Leave me a comment for my five biggest surprise for the Montreal Canadiens in 2022. And let's move on now, guys, for my next subject of the day. My next subject, guys, about the Montreal Canadiens update is getting ugly. I'll try to be fast on that one, but it's really important to understand what's going on with the Montreal Canadiens. In the last seven games on the road, they are 1 6 0. The last three games, they lost 7 2, 9 2, and 6 3. Since November 25th, guys, that night at the Thanksgiving, they were 11 9 and 1. Now they are 15 20 and 3. That's give them 4 11 2. And the last 17 game for the possibility of 34 points, they get only 10 points. Cannot win in hockey. That's simple, guys. And why they cannot win? But first of all, guys, the NHL goal per month since the beginning of the season. October, 3.15. November, 3.14. December, 3.11. All above 3.00. Montreal Canadian and October, not too bad, 3.00. Up November, they dropped 2.69 and December got 2.27. It's almost like one goal less per game compared to any other team in the NHL. The ab goal against per month, they gave goal against. And October, 3.0, it was even. November, they gave now 3.8, is about 1.2 more goal per game. And then in December, guy, 4.07. It's almost to go to give compared to any other team they play against. Not done yet, guys. The last seven games, Montreal's goal again 
34. That's an average of 4.86 game per goal per game. This is the last in NHL as a team. Then the shot again, they are giving 38 shots per game. And then the PK, <laughs> and the last seven game is 50.0%. 50. They are the bottom, guys. And that's the reason they're struggling. And that's the reason it's getting ugly. I want to listen to Martin Saint-Louis, what he said after the game about the Montreal Canadian performance. And then I'm going to give you my comments about what he said. Um, you know, I, I don't think it was an effort thing tonight. I thought we shot ourselves in the foot early. We can't kill a penalty right now to save our life. Uh, we got to get better in that department. Uh, and I think you end up chasing the game all the time. But uh, to me, it's the killing penalties and it's a D zone. Getting back home would be sort of like a fresh start. What's the main thing you start to work on maybe to try and get things going? Well, honestly, we don't have much time to work on anything, uh, you know, because of uh, the schedule. Uh, so we're going to look at it, we're going to address it, and we're going to try to put our best foot forward next game. Offensively, I mean, you'll be happy with what Cole's doing, what he's scoring, but how do you get? Yeah, no, I yeah, I, I felt tonight. Uh, we we offensively, I thought we transitioned and, and uh, you know broke the puck uh, well, played with the puck, possessed across the line with the puck more than we have in the past. Um, so happy with that. Uh, I don't think that's our problem. Uh, I think uh, you know the fact that we're chasing games a lot. I think it makes it hard to generate more down the stretch because the teams are sitting back, you know, and, and they're protecting a lead. So, uh, you know, I think for us it starts, uh, you know, in the D zone. Here we go, guys. Chasing the game and it starts with a defensive zone. So let's talk about a little bit more what I want to tell about the Montreal Canadian. Martin St. Louis, his biggest challenge is the stopping the slum. They are right now, guys, a really a big slum. This is the first time happening this season. Because what happening for Martin St. Louis, he have a mix of veterans and the young players in the team. The danger of this guy is possibly if they consider to losing the way they are doing right now, the veteran is going to less care about the game and they're going to give it to the young guests to figure out by themselves. And this is going to be a disconnection and a dysfunctional team at some point if Martin St. Louis cannot find a way to slump stop at some point. If not, it's going to be ugly and ugly and ugly until the end of the season. At some point, possibly Martin St. Louis can lose the locker room. What happening now in December, guys? First of all, the schedule was not good for the Montreal Canadiens, but the level of hockey after the Thanksgiving is step up all the time. It's increasing. It's getting better. The team find their will and they're getting harder to play each other. And the problem, remember what Ken you said in October, we're going to play with two defensemen rookie per game. Right now, they use four. The last couple of games, they use five. It's impossible to win in NHL with five rookies as def defensemen. Martin said we talk about the defensive zone coverage a couple of minutes ago, right? Chasing the score. But you talk about one word, the discipline. And the discipline is about defense. Uh, things are not fun to do. And do it like you enjoy it. This is really big statement right there. And he's targeting different players like Zuski, Caulfield, Anderson, Doc. And I can go all the way like that. The discipline and defense about do things are not fun to do. And do it like you enjoy it. I really like what he said. Visit the Predator yesterday, guys. The same recipes like other game. Gave gold at the beginning. Three gold the first 11 minutes. Gave gold and PK. Two more yesterday. Difficulties and defensive zone coverage, guys. It was ugly and defensive zone yesterday. And I'm a little bit worried, guys, about the situation. Obviously, the veteran struggle. Gallagher ain't split the last two games. And Munson, what's going on with him, guys? And Munson yesterday was on the ice five of the six goals. He let Novak in front of the net like nothing. And Splin and Edmondson, the last three games. It's not the Joel Edmondson we know in the last two years play with the Montreal and yet he gave guys uh, 10 goals and even strength during that trip of seven games. I don't know, if you want to trade Joel Edmondson and you look what he's doing right now, he's, you're not going to get a big return for him. So guys, I just want to share this uh, ab update getting ugly. I know it's a little bit longer tonight, but I want to share when I'm feeling about them and what the problem they have right now and i would like to hear from you tell me what's going on with the Montreal Canadian and understand people said thanking for Connor Bedard i know since the beginning of the season guys will be finished at 29 
But I don't like the way they play right now. I don't like it's not fun to watching them losing 7-2. That reminds us uh, last year when they fired Dominic Charm. We don't want to go back there. They have to figure out right now to be back like they was at the beginning of the season. Maybe not winning and come back like they did, but at least performing better. At least give us an effort. At least to show up and at least to give a, an opportunity to win until to the last minute of the game. That's what we're looking for. And hopefully they're going to come back stronger at home during the month of the January. Most of the game they played during the 14 game guys they have 10 of them out at home this concludes my last subject of the day here we go guys episode number 221 is over hopefully you enjoy it but before we leave please uh, click on the like subscribe to the kinesian live show leave me a comment uh, about this episode and i can't wait to see you for the next video of the app daily news uh, until then uh, of course uh, you have greatness inside of you and i wish you an amazing blessing day everybody mm -hmm.